Hi, and welcome to Spooky Isles. My name is David Saunders, and today we're talking to Hertfordshire-based psychic medium Barbara Lowe. How are you, Barbara? I'm good. You okay, David? I'm going well. Now, Barbara was one of the first people I met when I first came to Britain and uh, was the first person to bring me on a on a ghost hunt, really. You brought me to Epping Forest on a very yeah, <laughs> dark, 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 horrible, wet night. And uh, I remember being at the time being more scared about falling in a, a hole or a, a, a puddle. Yeah. <laughs> how, how are you coping uh, in the lockdown, not being able to go out and do your uh, your ghost hunts at the moment? Um, I'm coping at the moment. Um, I've got three clearings on the list at the moment to do when they come out of lockdown. <laughs> um, can you, but I'm waiting. Doing yeah. okay. Can you tell us what a clearing means? Because some people might not understand what uh, you mean by people that. Have, people have got a haunted house or a haunted building. Um, I go in there and I'll see what's wrong with the house and see what it, if there is a haunted house, a haunted building. And then I will actually have a talk to the ghost and cross it over. Okay. So how long have you uh, known that you had uh, the ability to be able to uh, speak to ghosts and spirits? Since I was four years old. Can you tell us about how, how you worked that one out? I saw a hand come out of a wall. Um, and what else I did, I actually was getting messages. Um, and like I was saying, oh, you're, I was like saying, same seems people and say an example um oh your nan said you really got to keep your hair up like that you look really really pretty and her nan was dead <laughs> passed yeah. over yeah. and my dad needs to keep saying don't do that because <laughs> you're going to scare people <laughs> yeah. so you, you sort of had to had to learn how to be a, appear normal in those sort of respects yeah, yeah. <laughs> and that's no don't do that <laughs> was it something that ran in your family a psychic ability? My dad does a little bit. My sisters have both got it as well. My nephews have got it as well. My daughter is showing signs a little bit. She said about me on the ceiling every day. How, how, old is, is your, how old is your daughter? Five. Five. And what does she do to show abilities? What what, what is she doing that's making um, you think that? The other day she did come up and say there's a man standing on the ceiling. Um, and she gave him a full blow description of him and point and I'll go, oh, hello, and all that. I'll try not to scare her, but just doesn't actually know that, what I do. <laughs> did she, did she, so did she saw some, someone on the ceiling. Could you yeah. see that? Could you see the same thing? No. Okay. Is that often happen for some do you, Can psychics see the same things that are, in the, like, the two of them see it? Is that because you're on a different dimension or something? Yeah, what it is, is because Jessie is still an innocent, um, she can still see things what I can't see because um, she's more in a pure state. Um, it's like I work for another medium, Sharon, um, and I can see things that Sharon can't see as well, which is it's weird. It's just we yeah. all work differently. And uh, how do you, you what, does, what does it appear like? Do you, do you actually see like she saw some man on the ceiling? Do you see a man? Do you see a... Uh, what does it look like when you're when you when you're seeing something? Like I'm seeing you. Yep. So is it, is, like is, it, is it is it clear? Can you see through the person, or is it just straight? No, I'm talking I to some blokes in there. No, I see solid. Okay. How can you tell if some, How can you tell the difference between someone who's living and someone who is a uh, spirit? Uh, normally, because they look very confused um, and they're desperate to talk to you, um, but sometimes. Normal, a normal person just looks just like a normal person, but a spirit person, you know that they're spirit because when I can turn my gift on and off, because if I turn my gift, um, yeah, off at the moment, but if I've got my gift on, then I'll still see spirit as well. Yeah. You know, it's a bit hard to explain it. I always wondered, I mean, I'm, 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 while we're on this subject, because I always find this fascinating, just when these little things come to my mind, when you're walking down the street, and you, you walk down and there's no one in front of you, but is there, do you ever get to the point where you've got to walk past a spirit and sort of get out of their way or you walk right through them? How does, how does that work? Or is, it, is um, that not how the, right. is that not how it works? Have you already done it? Have you ever felt like you've walked through a cobweb? Maybe, I don't know. I've not, never thought about it more than that. But <laughs> is, is, is that what it's like? That's what it feels like. You're actually walking through a cobweb. But do you know that you're walking, if I was walking, I wouldn't want to walk through someone. Do you, do you deliberately walk through them now? No, they're just spirit. I'll just keep walking, or it just happens. Uh, I, I normally walk around them. If I've, I've actually got my gift open, I'll actually walk around them. 
because I'm still, you know, always being respectful for two. Oh, so, so you could open and shut it. So you could decide, boom, I'm not doing anything today. I'm just, you know, going to be like uh, the average person walking down the street. But then yep. about the other twenty, you go, I'm now at work. Boom, I'm now off to do the to, to yep. talk to the spirits. Okay, well that that's good. So how do you use that kind of a what do you? We talked about house clearings, and I think you call them something else. You don't normally rescue. call rescue. rescue why, why are they rescue? Tell, tell me about that. What it is is a rescue spirit is um, somebody's actually decided not to cross over when they passed over. Um, sometimes it's like I want my car. I'm going to take my car with me uh, because family problems. They don't want to leave their family. Um, you know, sometimes it's just things like that. So it's their choice. And then eventually the light will shut and then they're trapped. So they can't go anywhere. Um, and then sometimes like I've, I've had one person before, um, give example, he was murdered outside a nightclub, a gay nightclub, and he was actually haunting his murderers. Okay. And he wanted to haunt them? Because he was absolutely... Oh, no, 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 no. I understand why he was haunted, but it was yeah. his decision that wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't, he wasn't locked here by any kind of, it was his, his own, he wanted to be here. To, he wanted in, to be here. Okay. And so how did you get involved in that? Had I talked to him, told him he can't do that, and then eventually um, talked him around, and then eventually just opened the light up and crossed him over. So were you were you working on behalf of the murderers? No, I was actually um, I got called in uh, through a paranormal group, okay. and I got asked to do because um, they were having they were having a lot of problems. It turned out she went to school with him. Okay, all right. Um, so what? So the the the, the ghost, for a better word, was yeah. was their spirit was uh, haunting a certain place, hoping to get revenge on the people that murdered him. Yeah. And uh, but you were brought in by someone else to say, look, this poor bloke, help him. You know, he's got to forget about all that kind of stuff and just go over to the other side. And that's what you did. Yeah. Okay. Are they usually is uh, that's quite dramatic, isn't it? You know, having a murder. <laughs> yeah. I imagine that's not. I imagine that's not normally the case. I imagine I don't know what what would be an average case for you. Uh, normally get called in, um, like at the moment, I've got a, clear, uh, a clearing job on at the moment. Um, what it is at the moment, it's a bit like Enfield Poachergeist at the moment. It's okay. quite a bad one. I've got quite a really, really bad one to do. Um, yeah. He's getting cupboards opening and shutting, banging, children laughing, growling, banging on walls, um, stuff getting chucked all the time. The worst they've got phone at the moment is scissors. Okay, that's not good. Coins. You then yeah. ten pop no, so that's okay. nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> throw, at throw money at me, but yeah. <laughs> so, so, what part of the world is that? What part of um? I know you can never give us uh, details of where these places are, but is it a like? Is there a general location where this uh? Or do you walk all over London and? North. Where was that? Sorry. This one's up north. Up north. Okay. I'm assuming, north. I'm assuming they're gonna have to wait for lockdown to uh, open up again for it to get sorted there. Yeah, we're constantly on top of contact with each other at the moment. And if it it gets a little bit hairy again, he gives me a call and I send one of my guides, Annie, over there to calm it down slightly. But oh, okay. I'm the third medium to go in. Oh, okay. We even had a priest in. Didn't work. Okay. All right. So, and what do you think is going on? So you've been you you have been in there already, but it's it's a mess. Not in a way, work. yeah, for Annie. Um, I know there's a man in there. There's children in there. Um, there's a man in the back room because he keeps telling me the um, the client keeps telling me the back room is really really cold all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's getting a growling noise as well. well. He had a lot of growling noise when the priest came in. Okay. But there's children in there because he keeps hearing running up and down and children laughing and things like that. Okay. So so, a children in there. And what and, and what happens when you you know there must be e easier cases where you can go in and talk to them or do whatever you do to, to get them to, pa to pass through or pass on uh this one is just more belligerent just doesn't want to doesn't want to move um i think the children could be easy to cross over um they're definitely more mischievous the man in the back room is going to be another kettle um i think he's going to be quite i'm not going so 
if it's going to be like that situation, then what I'll do, I will do because what I can do, I can actually open the light at will. Yeah. Um, as you know, and um, what you what I do is I will actually seal one fill one room up with light and seal it off, and then I'll keep going around the whole house and seal rooms up so I've got him in exactly one place. Yeah. And then I'll say, right, if you want to go, we'll go. If you want to play that ball, don't want to play ball, then I'll just fill up the room with light and trap him. Yeah. So no long, choice. So how long does that take for, to, for, to do something as complicated or seemingly complicated as that? Say that again. How long does that normally take, something as seemingly complicated as sealing up all these rooms and trapping them? Not, Not long? Not long. Not long. Like, like half an hour, 15 minutes, 10 minutes? Probably Depends on how big the house is. Yeah. Um, normal standard house can take you about half an hour to do it. Okay. All right. So, when when you like, so that's obviously the work that you do, and you don't. I, don't, I believe you don't get paid for that. I normally ask for a donation to cover petrol because yeah. this said going up north is going to be out two hundred odd miles. Yeah, no, I understand that. I think that's normally what most people do. They pay for petrol, and that, that's it. But you're not, yeah, you're, not you're not doing this to to become rich by any means. Yeah. You have your you have your other more. I mean, I'm sure that's fun as well in a certain way. But you also do your your investigations, and mm -hmm. I've been on a number of investigations with you. Where has been your most fun, most eye opening experience you've had where you haven't been working in that kind of respect? You know, Kelvin Hatch. <laughs> okay, tell us tell us about that. The secret um, killer bun bunker. Then did that on a public investigation to blow the public out, um, and we had one of the members of the public, I told everybody, you know, don't wander off because this place is humongous. And one of the mum, one of the members of the public, he walked into the medical room. And I know for a fact that that medical room is really active. And he came running out and went, someone just told me to get out. <laughs> and I went, I did tell you, don't go yeah. wandering off in there. <laughs> but we did have the table get was chucked at me because yeah. we had a you know, with the group splitting up. Um, I had H, well, Harry, as we call him H. Um, he was in the hub, we watching the CCTV, we had set up, and we had on the walkie-talkie, can somebody come and rescue me? Because there's somebody actually coming, falling on the floor towards me. Okay. And he's like, come and get me, come and help me. Okay. Um, and what was that about? What, 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 what was that? I mean, soldier. we always talk, what's that? It was a soldier, was it? Yeah, it was a soldier because when I went to go and shut the hub up and shut the whole building up, um, you know, when we finished at three o'clock in the morning, there was somebody standing at the, on the top of the staircase at the yeah. hub because yeah. that went down into the tunnel, which is a hundred foot long. Okay. And uh, did you did you speak to that that spirit? No, you were just standing there, like just like bye. <laughs> I'm glad okay. to get rid of you. Okay. So do you, do you have, when you, like the, obviously Kelvin Hatch is a famous place, there's lots of investigations there. Do you ever get behind some of the, what some of the stories are behind there? I know you don't like to know the stories before you go in, but have you ever discovered discrepancies in what, what, the, what is being said publicly and what actually is happening at a, at a famous place like that? Not really. I normally, I said normally Robin, as you know, Robin, um, he normally does all the background checks on locations um but sometimes we have been to one location before and it turned out because i couldn't understand why about the second fire of london why i kept yeah. getting the second fire of london and when we did the research on it this was actually a pub i was doing a rescue uh, clearance on it turned out that actually there's um a river nearby and they actually uh, put all the dead bodies on the you know the canal and they were actually put in storage i didn't know there was two great fires in london there was okay. actually two of them. okay i didn't know that either but yeah okay and so you've, you've you've discovered something that wasn't publicly known yeah okay what have you got any places that you'd like to go to because obviously you've been doing this for a long time and you you live in london you're now living in Hertfordshire. are there any places you've got a dream list you've not been to yet uh, Tower London, I've always wanted to do so a little, but yeah. it's not allowed. No. Um, there's a, I have got a big list of locations I want to do. Um, yeah. There's there's an old school, a bit like a good school that's near it, near here. Yeah. Um, you're, and that's you're a, my list. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. my list to do. Um, okay. But there's, you know, there's, 
I would like to do some of like the palaces and some of the prisons. Yeah. You know, but some of the prisons cost a lot of money to actually hire out because if most haunted have been there, the price just quadruples. Yeah. Yeah, no, I imagine. Right. But you must get satisfaction. I think, from my view, the general public would much prefer to go into a haunted house, some of the places you do clearings, mm. because they, they, they feel much more real. Do you think, do you think that's true? Yeah. Yeah, because, you got the, because Enfield, I mean, Enfield Poltergeist was in a house. It wasn't in a, a castle. It wasn't in a prison. It was yeah. in just a normal council flat or council house. Yes. Yeah. Same so, as one up north, yeah. A bit like yeah. that. So, what are, you, what are you going to be doing to keep yourself busy over the next, uh, hopefully not too much longer in lockdown? Um, I said at the moment, I'm looking after mum's um, allotment because mum's actually in isolation. She's not allowed out because she's vulnerable. Yeah. Um, and mostly homeschooling my daughter, who's only five. Yes, so <laughs> who's, who's, got ability, who's got some kind of abilities we find out now. So that'll be, that'll be quite interesting to see how she goes. Are you, are you doing anything to develop her skills? Um, I'm hoping to, but I don't really want her to have my childhood, really, because I know okay. what it's like being grown up as a, as a, as a word I used to say, freak. Yeah, so you want to wait till she gets older and then she can uh, develop in, in, her, in her own time. So, yeah. that's sure. well, look forward to talking to you again, Barb. We've only got a short time today, and uh, but I do okay. appreciate your time, and uh, I hope we can get out of here quickly, because it sounds like it's dreadful what's going on up in that council house up in uh, northern England, so we'll... Uh, <laughs> We'll, we'll uh, maybe get back to you at some stage and you update us on what happens there. Yeah, I should do, yeah. <laughs> All right, you can have a good one. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Bye.